the plan is pretty much to spend, I mean, I didn't have a chance to meet with you guys the very first time you were on campus, so we had to make up for all the lost time, so to speak, uh, because to me, we talk about analytics, we talk about business analytics, understanding some of the details surrounding a company's supply chain is absolutely essential. It's not just understanding a company's supply chain, it's understanding how we're going to use the data that we're going to procure. So understanding how to procure data, or how to procure good data is very critical. So this course is uh, very well aligned to what, uh, what a PKV has been spending time in the classroom, looking at some of the backgrounds in terms of statistical methodologies. But this goes further to say, okay, once you get the data, what do you do with it, right? So there are some classic topics we'll cover over the next three days. One of the very first topics I really want to spend quite a bit of time in the classroom is a topic that all of you guys are very familiar with, something we all do every day in the workplace, something we all do even at home, you know, where we make some prediction. Okay, so if I get up in the morning, I send my family off, I get to spend X amount of hours in front of the TV, you know, you know what I mean. So all these are predictions we're making. So it's all about making forecasts. It's all about making prediction. And the reason why as managers this becomes very critical is that we don't know what's going to happen in the near future because of the high degree of uncertainty we have. So without knowing what's going to happen in the future, this could be next week, could be tomorrow, could be next month, could be six months from now, could be a year from now, without really knowing with a hundred percent certainty what's going to happen in the future, all of us have to make some prediction, right? So it's no longer the case where I'm sure in the workplace, your, your manager goes like, no, believe me, trust me, I've been working in this department for 20 years. 15 years, 25 years. Absolutely, I respect you, okay? I definitely want to trust you, but I still want to verify, right? That's all we're doing. We want to verify that whatever information we have is reasonably good. That's the reason why forecasting is very critical. Now, what's a supply chain? So to me, a supply chain consists of five major entities. Five major entities. And these, these five entities play a very critical role pretty much in terms of every single analytical tool that we'll cover in the classroom. How these five players are going to work together from a supply chain standpoint. The very first player, the very first key stakeholder are going to be your suppliers. Sourcing becomes an absolutely important issue. Trying to figure a sourcing base. You know, how many suppliers is too many? Do I need to have this one supplier for a product? Do I need to have multiple suppliers for my product? Or I'm trying to offer, so I'm in the service industry, healthcare, hospitality, you name it, fast food. How many suppliers do I need? Because I'm dealing with several different kind of products, raw materials, okay? Inputs, key inputs, components, and whatnot. So trying to find a good supplier base is absolutely critical. So the very first stakeholder in the supply chain are suppliers. Number two, within your company, you're going to have your, what we call as a purchasing department, or what is also called as a procurement department. In some companies, they call this materials management department. They're the ones whose job is to identify the supplier base, they're the ones whose job is to understand which supplier is going to supply how many units of which product at what time interval. They're the ones who are going to decide on the pricing, how much we should pay. Okay, so procurement department or purchasing is a very critical entity, number two. Number three is what I call as production. I use the word production in a very loose sense. In a manufacturing setup, it's producing products. In a service setup, it's about trying to put the service package together that can be offered to customers. So production is a very critical entity. Number four comes your distribution. 
Okay, and we'll talk about this in more detail. Do we talk? We'll talk about you know what is warehousing, what is the distribution center, how do we use the data we get to do some good analytics to decide do I keep a centralized warehouse versus a decentralized warehouse? What is the risk involved? So a lot of risk management is involved in trying to decide do I go with a centralized warehouse or a decentralized warehouse? That's my fourth entity. My last entity is I'm going to group both retailers. and customers as one entity okay i'm going to group both retailers and customers as one entity so the idea out here is these five major entities have to work together these five entities have to be what i call as integrated these five entities have to understand here's the customer demand here's how the suppliers are going to deliver what do i have to do internal within my company to make sure i'm able to balance supply with demand the last 10 15 years there's been a dramatic shift in terms of how companies operate used to be the case way back in the mid 1990s where every company or most companies are what i call as supplier driven the suppliers pretty much dictated how the company needs to operate now the last 15 years there's been a major shift from a supplier driven mentality to what i call as a customer demand mentality so you can see more and more companies now are customer driven customers dictate how you're going to operate customers dictate what they need customers dictate how you're going to deliver customers dictate to some extent what kind of price you can charge for the product so it's become a customer driven a customer demand driven supply chain so there are one of the classic topics that we covered today is how do we make the forecast given the fact that this is high degree of uncertainty we're dealing with how do we try to predict and obviously we can never ever eliminate uncertainty what we try to do is can we decrease the degree of uncertainty and one way to decrease it is to make some good forecast now what are we good forecast how do i define good forecast a forecast is good if whatever you are predicting is as close as possible to whatever is going to happen in the real world okay how close am i to reality so to speak right so because we're doing prediction today your hope is that it's not the numbers you're going to predict or forecast are not too far away from what is actually going to happen so the number of tools will cover in the classroom today but the very first issue i want to address in terms of forecasting is i want you guys to understand there is seldom a superior forecasting tool i repeat there is seldom a superior forecasting tool because think about if there was a superior forecasting tool i wouldn't waste your time in the classroom talking about various tools or i would go straight to the one tool get done with it and move on so whatever works well for your company is what you're going to be using so when i go consult and one of my common questions i ask companies is okay what kind of forecasting tool do you use i get one of two responses response number one um let me call my it manager and get back to you response number two i'm using some they give me some name i go like why why are you using this tool let's say moving average why and the response is you know professor you have to understand we just invested a million dollars in our erp system so this erp system came with a forecasting tool and that happened to be moving average really really you never ask the question is this forecasting tool appropriate to what i'm doing in my workplace not really so i think what i'm trying to convey to you guys is important to understand that for various products and services that you want to offer in the marketplace there are various forecasting tools that might be appropriate for you guys in terms of forecast that's my very first point point number 2 in fact i'm going to call this rule number 1 in forecasting rule number 1 in forecasting is Forecasting is always wrong. 
Wow. It's always wrong, and then you go having us spend, you know, three, four, five hours of class time discussing a topic or a tool that is wrong. Oh well. It's always wrong. Nevertheless, we still have to make that forecast because that's what's going to give us a good starting point. Without the good starting point, you cannot move further along. So what I'm trying to again convey to you guys is that it's critical to make the forecast, but understand that that only gives you a good starting point. Now, what I mean by good starting point? There are various things I'm going to talk about in the forecast, right? So you look at data. What are some major issues with data, right? So there are four components that I'm going to talk about in a typical what I call as a time series. What's a time series, right? So to me, a time series. Okay, so I, I, I spoke about how forecasting is always wrong. Here's my number two rule in forecasting. Forecasting is much more accurate when we look at what I call as aggregation. I'm looking at groups of families or products. How can I group together? So there are some common traits, a common background that some of the products portray. So by trying to group them together, we get a much better accurate forecast. We'll talk all about, we'll use data, I'll show you guys how these, all these things matter. Number three, forecasts are much more accurate for a short time period. There are what we call as short term forecasting versus long term forecasting. If I forecast what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, that's a short term forecast. If I forecast what's going to happen next year, that's a long term forecast. So my second rule in forecasting says that, note this down, my second rule in forecasting says that longer the time period, longer the time period, larger the forecast error. Okay? Longer the time period, larger the forecast error. That's the reason why every forecast should always include an error estimate, right? It always should include an error estimate. And, by the way, even though forecasting is always wrong, there are absolutely no substitute for trying to really understand what demand is going to be for a company, right? So I'm just giving you some basic funda behind forecasting before we dive into all the tools where we use data 